Getting it wrong and putting it right, part two. In this episode, I reassemble the engine, which includes the new cylinder that I machined. I explain the casting sand problem, which seems to be quite common. After fitting steam grade silicone o-rings and packing the glands, I assemble the newly painted engine on the original baseboard. These clips are edited from a series I made called Rebuilding a Stuart Twin Victoria. The first cylinder was not very well made, that's why I decided to make another one. That's done now, so I'm just going to have a quick look at this. Like the other cylinder, this one's coming apart okay, and none of the fastenings seem to be sheared off or broken. That's a good thing. One of the studs came away with the nut, as you can see here, it's missing on the corner. So when I put the engine back together, all the studs will be fastened into the casting using a compound, but not Loctite 603, that's far too strong. I'll probably just use some 542, the hydraulic seal, and it's enough to hold the studs in place, so that when you dismantle the engine at any time, particularly when it's been in service for a while, at least the whole stud will not come out when you undo the nut. Well, the good news is, all the threads seem fine, and the port face is in quite good shape. It's much better machining than on the other one. So now, continuing, I'm going to dismantle the crosshead, and as you can see, like the other side, there's a massive gap between the actual bars. This is no good at all, the slide bars need to be a snug fit on the main crosshead. Looking at the position of the cylinder, and the position of the crosshead with the bars, it looks like I'm going to have to make some more spacers and making spacers is a very simple job. Once I make two or three to get the test level for the height, then I will make some that are quite ornate, quite similar to the ones that are currently between the guide bars on the video at the moment. There is one modification that I'm going to make. With the Stuart Victoria, the design just has a pin that passes through the crosshead and through the fork of the connecting rod. I've made a couple of these engines in the past, and I always find that this pin moves around. So on this engine, in the square bit at the end of the connecting rod, I'm going to drill it, tap it, and put a grub screw in so that the cross shaft will be held in position. Nothing on these cylinders was particularly tight, including the two small 7BA countersunk bolts. They're coming out quite easily, as you can see here. And that's a good thing, because sometimes on an old engine, with this design where the countersunk bolts are behind a bracket, they get rusty and become part of the cylinder cover, then they're very difficult to remove but at this stage it's very easy. And likewise on the other cover, on the front cover, they're really just coming out so easily. It's very easy to totally forget about the gasket on the exhaust port until you need one, and I don't have any of these, so very carefully using a craft knife, I'm removing the gasket and putting it in a safe place. Luckily, as this engine's never run, they're in very good condition, just like the new gasket. When I fed air into this engine, nothing really happened. So I'm now going to investigate the reason for nothing happening, and it's quite simple. The cores are full of sand. Now, this is so easily overlooked. The good thing about the Stuart Models Victoria is that the steam ports are cast in at the foundry. This is a very good thing because it means you do not have to drill the steamways from the end of the cylinder to the ports. But, if it's full of sand, it's not going to work. And this sand is very dense stuff, it's meant to be, it's how it works with the casting process. And if any oil gets added to it, it gets even denser. My airline would not blow the stuff away. I had to poke it out with the paper clip, then I could use the airline to get rid of the rest of it. These piston rings appear to be neoprene, which is okay if you're going to run on compressed air. But if you run on steam, the temperature of the steam, particularly if it's superheated, will just melt the o-rings. So what we need to use are steam grade silicone ones. And here you see me removing the old piston ring with a very blunt craft knife, trying not to cut my fingers at the same time. And I'm going to fit a couple of silicone ones. When fitting the silicone type, make sure that you fully lubricate the groove before you fit them. And be very careful across the sharp edges. In fact, if you machine the pistons yourself, always take off the inner sharp edges slightly. While the engine is in this dismantle state, it's very easy to pack the glands. So I had a look and they weren't packed anyway. So I'm using some of my old graphited yarn to pack the gland. This graphited yarn is some real old stuff that I use. I actually unpick some full-size braided yarn because I find the modern stuff not too good. 
This is great though, once it's in, it's in for the duration and you don't get any steam leaks. There's something deeply satisfying about doing this and I don't really know what it is. Particularly when you put the nuts back on without dropping them on the floor, then that's quite good. When you tighten the glands, don't go mad. You need to nip up the gland and then back it off a little bit. That way you get a nice sliding motion without any pressure leaks. If you over tighten the gland, you will actually score the piston rod. Having made a new crankshaft and a new cylinder to replace one that was damaged, it's time to put the engine back together. What I would normally do is give the engine a first coat of paint, and this is the first coat that you see here. This green is not Stuart green. I don't actually like the modern Stuart green colour, so what I do is mix my own. This is Humbrol number no. 3 green, with some black added, and the more black that you add, the darker the green gets. I generally do not paint all of the parts. These are the cylinder brackets that hold the cylinders in place. And I don't like them painted, I think they look okay in sort of natural steel colour. A lot of full-size mill engines that I've seen are generally painted green, but they do have a lot of bare metal showing. And yes, it will go rusty, but a bit of oil generally takes care of that. It's not a problem in the model. When I ordered the replacement cylinder castings from Stuart Models, I also ordered some gaskets, and here they are. It's false economy to reuse the old gaskets. Nothing worse than putting the engine back together, spending a load of time to find out that it leaks where the gaskets are. In this shot you can see the studs are in place, and the two missing ones at the bottom are for the countersunk bolts. And here is the cylinder with the covers attached. This cylinder was the one that I remachined, so it's good to see that it moves very freely. No binding, no tight spots, and it's parallel all the way. And here it is fitted to the engine. When building or replacing a cylinder on a Stuart Victoria, it is really important, in fact it's essential, that the port face is perfectly in line with the base. If the cylinder is cantered over in either direction, not only will the engine look bad, everything will be very out of line. So if you are building one from scratch, be very careful at the marking out stage of the cylinder for the bolts that mount onto this piece of angle bracket that you have to machine. Making a single Victoria is one thing, making a twin is much more difficult. The two cylinders must be in line with each other. This engine wasn't like this at first. Both of the exhausts came to the outside edge of the engine and I thought this is not a good idea because it's more difficult to have a common collector. So I've reversed the cylinder that I made so both of the exhaust ports face each other between the cylinders. But of course, if the cylinders are not in line, Getting a pipe to look right is not going to be easy. So here you see me using a piece of 316 steel just to show that yes, the ports are perfectly in line. So that when I make the copper exhaust pipes, everything will look very good. Back to the cylinder now. Here I'm applying a liberal coat of steam oil on the port face because I'm going to fit the slide valve followed by the steam chest and cover. Make sure when you're playing with a Victoria that you put the slide valve in the right way around. If you put it in the other way, because it's not exactly square, you will not get enough valve travel. I see an awful lot of Stuart models where the slide valve is in the wrong way. Also, make sure that the little cross piece, the brass piece you can see, is not a tight fit in the actual valve. The valve has to float slightly so that steam pressure can hold it onto the face. Quite a routine job this, I've done it many, many times. The gland's been packed with some graphited yarn, and I'll just put a bit of oil on here. Then all that's left to do is to fit the gasket, followed by the steam chest cover. The studs that hold the steam chest cover in place are only 7BA, with 7BA nuts, so be very careful not to shear these off. Do not put too much pressure on at all, just enough to nip them up tight. And now for the exciting part, a compressed air test to make sure that the cylinder actually works. Now the other cylinder. Yes, everything's fine with both of these. Plenty of power. The silicone piston rings are creating a great seal in the cylinder. Now flush with success because everything works, it's time to do a dummy run on assembly. Both of these parts need to be the same distance away from each other all the way down. But first, it's a good idea to fit the guide bars. 
The twin crossheads need to be a good fit in the guide bars with no tight spots. And by no tight spots I don't mean a rattle fit. The original builder of this engine fitted everything as a rattle fit, mainly due to the fact that the cylinders were not in line with the bed plate. So now I can get a good fit by simply machining a tiny amount off the two middle spacers and using some shim washers underneath. I'm going to use the old base that the engine was originally mounted on to line everything up. The engine will be screwed to this base for the test running procedure, then it will be removed and fitted to a nice mahogany plinth. Now I know that everything fits OK and works, I need to take the engine apart again, rub down the paintwork, give it another coat of paint, then reassemble the engine for a final setting of the timing and a test run. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.